Welcome to the latest episode of Equation Stripped, where I take some of the most important equations in maths and then strip them back layer by layer so that anyone can understand. This time, we're looking at Newton's law of gravity. Now, this is one of the most important discoveries in the history of science because it really set the scene for modern day physics and our current understanding of the universe by introducing the idea that we can use simple mathematical equations to describe the world around us. It is, of course, a familiar story. Sir Isaac Newton is sitting in his garden, contemplating the meaning of life in the universe one fine sunny day, when an apple falls from a tree in a perfect perpendicular straight line and hits the ground, and suddenly everything made sense. This moment was Newton's equivalent of Archimedes in ancient Greece, filling his bathtub and screaming Eureka as he ran down the streets. This was the point when Newton figured it all out. And what he'd figured out was not only that the Earth was exerting a force, which we now call gravity, that was pulling the apple down towards it, but the apple itself must also be exerting a force. It's much weaker, but the apple is also drawing the Earth towards itself. And that is the key insight in Newton's work. Not only did Newton discover gravity, but by writing it down as a simple mathematical equation in the form of Newton's law of gravity, it meant that he could start to do calculations, start to work out exactly what the forces were between objects. And knowing what the forces are, you can then start to work out how objects will behave. And perhaps the most important or famous calculation that Newton did was to show that the planets in our solar system actually go around the sun in elliptical orbits. So the orbits are ellipses, sort of squashed circles. Of course, since the days of Newton, we've moved a long way in our understanding of our solar system. For example, we've launched rockets into space, we've launched satellites into space. If you think about right now, all of the satellites orbiting the Earth, that is only possible because of very precise calculations about the strength of the Earth's gravitational field. And all of those calculations are done based on Newton's law that he wrote down several hundred years ago. And they have to be exact because for a satellite to remain in orbit around the Earth, it has to go at a particular exact speed so that it stays on the circular path. And if you're slightly out, your satellite might start to drift closer and closer to the Earth and would crash, or it might start to drift further and further away and be lost to space. And so without Newton's law of gravity, we wouldn't really have satellites. We wouldn't be able to keep them in orbit around the Earth. And so that means no modern communications, no television, no mobile phones, no GPS to know your location. And it definitely means no space travel. Having now stripped back to the second layer, we're going to look at what the equation actually means. And it tells us the force of attraction between two objects depends on the mass of those objects and the distance that's between them. So, our F here is our force of attraction, and then this term on the right hand side we have a fraction, so we have a numerator and a denominator. And you can basically think of it as mass over distance. So for the force to increase, then the mass would either increase, so bigger objects would have a bigger attractive force, or the distance could decrease. So if the objects would move closer together, there is a stronger force of attraction between them. So big objects close together have a very strong attractive force and small objects far apart have a very weak attractive force. In terms of the effect of the distance between two objects on the strength of the gravitational force, we can think about our solar system. So of course we have the sun at the center, which is this huge massive ball of fire and you have all of the planets orbiting the sun in elliptical orbits, as calculated by Newton. And as the distance increases, you're getting further and further away from the sun, and so you'd expect the gravitational pull of the sun to be weaker, according to Newton's law of gravity. 
And we know that this is the case because we can actually calculate the speed at which the planets are moving in their orbits around the Sun. And the speed relates to the strength of the gravitational force because the stronger the force from the Sun pulling the planet towards it, the faster the planet has to move to remain in orbit. If the planet isn't going fast enough, it will be pulled into the Sun and be destroyed. And as you can see, as we move further and further from the Sun, the distance increases. The speed is decreasing, as we would expect. Now that I've stripped back to the third layer, we're going to look at the individual terms in Newton's law of gravity, in our equation. And as you may have guessed, the F on the left-hand side, this is our force of attraction, this is our gravity. And then moving on to the right-hand side, we have four terms. The first one, capital G, this is the gravitational constant. So this is a fixed number given by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. So it's a tiny, tiny number. And this is fixed across the whole universe. And Newton knew that this existed because he put it in his equation. But it wasn't actually measured until 71 years after Newton's death by Henry Cavendish. And M1 is mass of object 1, M2 mass of object 2, as you might expect. And then on the denominator, on the bottom, we have d squared. So d here is the distance between our two objects. And the fact that it's a squared and it's the denominator, it's on the bottom, is the reason that this whole law is sometimes also known as the inverse square law. You'll notice so far that we've only been discussing two bodies in this problem and the force between those two objects. And that's because in this form, Newton's law of gravity talks about m1 and m2 as mass of object 1, mass of object 2, and the distance d between them. So there's only two objects. But, of course, systems exist where there are three or more objects all interacting. So you could think of the sun, and then we have the earth going around the sun, and then you have the moon going around the earth. So how does the presence of the moon affect the earth's orbit around the sun? You've suddenly got a three-body problem with three objects with three masses and different distances between all of them. And so the problem becomes more complicated. And you can of course work this out, but you have to use approximations. And the reason that Newton's simple law in this form for two bodies has sort of withstood the test of time, the fact that it's still used and important today, is because the approximations that you make, they all come back to just using this very, very simple form. And that is why this equation is so important and just so great, really. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've learned something about Newton's law of gravity. If you like what I'm doing, please do subscribe. Then you'll be the first to know when I release a new video. Also, you can check out all of my material on my website, tomrocksmaths.com, and you can find me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all at Tom Rocks Maths. And I will see you next time with another equation ready to be stripped.